So I guess with, with blood pressure, the very first thing is electrolyte balance. That's the easiest and simplest thing to start with is your electrolyte. Forget about angiotensin, forget about A or Bs or this, that and the other. Get your hydration properly. From there is cardio. Wait, you don't you don't just take a bunch of drugs instead of <laughs> watching while you're eating and exercising? We're not going to sit in the sauna to bring the, the sodium down and, mm -hmm. and then do the ice bath for the, you know, the adrenaline dump so you don't get the vasoconstriction. <laughs> cardio? Really? I haven't we been saying this for the last like 14 yeah. episodes? It, it was at one point called fitness. I don't know where that went, but okay. <laughs> Regarding blood pressure management, let's just start with electrolytes. The overlooked method to control your blood pressure. And I know Dean is really on the edge of his seat to talk about magnesium. So <laughs> I think I think we're going to be shifting focus with blood pressure to potassium. Me and Kurt have covered this. True. Yeah. Take it away, two, man. Nearly two years ago, surrounding the importance of potassium and blood pressure regulation. So I guess what you've touched on electrolytes is hydration and when, when we say the word hydration people are like yeah but i drink three to four liters of fluid per day or i drink two gallons of water per day i'm hydrated and you're probably pissing out all your electrolytes with that much fluid if you're not taking the electrolytes with the water so the water water is neutrally charged so it needs an electrical charge to be pushed in and out of cells and that's where the ions sodium potassium, calcium, chloride even to an extent, phosphate. Yeah, phosphate. They all help with pushing fluid in and out of certain cells or different transporters. And when we look at what regulates our blood volume, as in the, the volume of fluid in our blood, that's where sodium becomes important. So sodium will retain volume of fluid in your mm. blood, which is where blood pressure will increase because you've increased the volume of your blood with more water or more pressure required to push that around. And potassium works in the opposite fashion, that potassium pushes fluid into your cells through the potassium pump. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at someone who is like pre-contest, getting ready to get on stage and all of a sudden they're flat, their muscles appear flat, they're not able to get a pump. They've done two things there. They've both gotten rid of sodium out of their bloodstream so now their blood volume has dropped which then in a certain instance will put the brakes on diuresis so you actually start to retain fluid or you look much softer and you'll have also lost some extent of potassium inside your cells mm. which deflates the appearance of the muscle so if we're looking at managing blood pressure the simplest task that we should be aiming for is a two is to one ratio to start between sodium and potassium intake. The sort of golden numbers I often suggest is 4,700 milligrams mm. of potassium, which is the RDA for potassium, and then somewhere around 2,000 milligrams of sodium. Mm -hmm. In most contest bodybuilders, it's actually way more sodium. They're yeah. salting yeah. every meal. They think like salt is key for a pump. Which is true, well, but... But I think you're, people misunderstand the pump. So the pump is outside of the muscle cell, right? The sodium by osmosis pulls the fluid out and it's around the cell. But where does, where does muscle protein synthesis occur? It occurs in the cell. So the pump doesn't contribute to growth because it's not occurring in the muscle cell. You're just yeah. getting a visual look from it, right? And sodium in serum is very tightly controlled in the human body. It doesn't matter if you take in 1,000 milligrams or 10,000 milligrams. Within a day, it regulates, and then it's the same. So it's mm -hmm. when these guys take this huge excess amount, they're not necessarily achieving anything. All they're doing is causing more excretion, so the body will balance, right? You see the same level on blood all the time, otherwise you'd be dead. Yeah, and it's not like you're just excreting sodium. No, you're then excreting everything. But you're excreting but the rest also because of it's not a... doesn't make any sense. No. You know, it, like it, Dean it, said, 2,000 milligrams is plenty. I think it does make a little bit of sense to increase your sodium intake if you train in a gym without air conditioning. So I, me, for example, I sweat buckets. Mm -hmm. So I, I drink about three liters of fluid during the, the session, uh, ice cold water, because I need to cool my core temperature down. And I, I sweat profusely this entire session. Like when I with can, your carbohydrates lower too, you're going to excrete more. Yeah, exactly. You know, your, your diet dictates that versus someone on a high-carb diet doesn't need as much sodium. So that's true, right? Probably I, I excrete more sodium also through urine because I have mm -hmm. 
a carbohydrate deficient diet basically and then the sweating um really depletes my electrolyte level yeah. so my sodium intake is a little bit on the high side um but you know i wouldn't recommend people to do that in, no. in a country where they don't sweat profusely well and even and dean correct me if i'm wrong even in athletes though that are used to training in that environment though the kidneys get very used to still maintaining it so your sodium loss yeah. is probably not as great as it was initially right so when you first went to thailand and trained in that environment you were losing a lot of sodium and then after a period of time relatively quickly your body got used to that yeah right? so it's going to retain you know just to keep the balance again because it's all about keeping that balance in the serum in a exactly. constant range yeah. all the time and then that being said, still my, my potassium to sodium intake is two to one, like um, cool. like Dean said. So if I have five grams of sodium, it's 10,000 milligrams of potassium per day. Yep. And it's yeah. fairly easy to maintain that ratio with salt substitutes. Like guys yep. often ask, <clears throat> how do you do that? Well, you find a potassium iodide or potassium chloride based yep. salt. And normally these are in a two is to one ratio. So you have like... 450 milligrams of potassium and like 200 milligrams of sodium and so as you increase your salt intake from that sort of perspective you maintain that ratio so if you weren't even to account for any of the salt sodium potassium and foods we have a product in the uk called low salt or mm -hmm. there's there's other yep. different brands of it 11 grams of that works out pretty much to 4,500 or 4,600 milligrams mm -hmm. potassium, roughly 2,200 milligrams sodium. So even if you were on a contest prep diet or even in general, and you're worried about maintaining this balance, just weigh out 11 grams of low salt and distribute it across all your meals. But like that, like what you're covering about training, then you have to think about what you're losing with sweat. You have to think about the rate of replenishment as well. So if you've lost a, a large chunk, like Kurt said, you've got homeostatic balance with aldosterone, an antidiuretic hormone, to try and retain sodium in your body. And obviously, we've done the pre-contest talk before. This is like the basics behind sodium loading that used to be done years ago. Where you just ramp sodium higher and higher and higher. And then one day out from the show, you literally done no sodium in hopes of you've pushed your aldosterone balance so far that antidiuretic hormone kicks in and you just flush all that yep. sub subcellular fluid or subcutaneous fluid out of the body to have a drier appearance, which we know doesn't really work in no. practice. No. no, I just have guys measure, you know, starting you know eight weeks out just tell me how much sodium they consume in a day and how much potassium they consume in a day and how much water and i just try to keep it constant right because it's the ver it's the variations that screw up the look right because then i can also add a little more take a little more away if i need to change it but if you don't know guy goes oh, he's in peak week and he has no idea how much sodium he's consuming or potassium it's really difficult to right you can kind of guess by the look and what they feel but it's that's a really tough game to play yeah, and it's it's hard when they start switching their meal plans around. Yeah. So you have a couple of days of depletion and then a couple of days of loading. So there's a caloric difference there. And then you go from, let's say, six meals to 10 smaller meals. So how are you going to salt that? Uh, that's why I always put the electrolyte balance okay. in my diet sheets. So it's easy to keep track. And then you remove the, the column for vitamin C and vitamin D. Yeah. That's kind of irrelevant in the peak week. Um, but it, I, I feel it's very important because like vegetables and stuff and the most animal protein has a good amount of potassium in it. Mm -hmm. And not so much sodium. And then depending on which vegetables or condiments you use, like if you yeah. add a pickle to each meal, you're going to increase your sodium intake. If you add soy sauce to each meal, you're going to increase your sodium intake. And and these simple little things, it's just very hard to keep track of if you don't put that in a diet sheet yeah. with the electrolytes listed, or at least measure everything uh, consistently, you know, where you use like a... Oh, a cocaine scooper to measure <laughs> yourself. <laughs> the very few, guys, the very yeah. few guys measure accurately, right? And I found yeah. that. So yeah. outside of a handful of guys that are really accurate with what they do, at the end, I give guys exactly what I want them doing every day, specifically. Because yeah. like, people assume, like even with macros, they're just off, right? You I, can tell them, you know, and that it doesn't even line up at all. I often oh. la laugh at when it's like measured in grinds. I've done four or six <laughs> grinds of salt on my meals. And I'm probably going to uh, trigger a lot of people in the comments, but if you're measuring your salt intake through grinds of salt. <laughs> 
have you actually ever weighed out what six grains of salt is? One, two, three, four. It's like not even half a gram of salt. Yeah. So. <laughs> Right, and it's and then, the same with, with sprinkling and counting yes. the seconds. Yeah, I did two seconds of sprinkles. Uh, <laughs> well, with the uh, sugar, the, the, the British sugar thing where you go one, uh, yeah. right? <laughs> and then as, as the sugar comes down, it's less, so you start pouring more. Right? That old school uh, crystal sugar uh, measuring device. Yes. And I asked my mom to do that once time. I said, how many, how many times do you do that in your cup of coffee per day? So she started doing that, and she's just eating like 100 grams of sugar <laughs> over the day. I said, well, now you know why you're not in shape. <laughs> so I guess with, with blood pressure, the very first thing is electrolyte balance. That's the, that's the easiest and simplest thing to, to start with is your electrolyte. Forget about angiotensin. Forget about A or Bs or this, that, and the other. Get your hydration properly. And then from there, the, the second ancillary if you want to tear it is cardio <laughs> just cardio yeah. fall into yeah wait you don't you don't just take a bunch of drugs instead of watch while you're eating and exercising we're not gonna sit in the sauna to bring the, the sodium down and yeah. you know and then do the ice bath for yeah. the for the yeah, just know, go back and forth adrenaline dump yeah. so you don't get the vasoconstriction yeah. <laughs> cardio really <laughs> I haven't we been saying this for the last like 14 yeah. episodes it, it was at one point called fitness. I don't know where that went, but okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so simple, yeah. simple tips aside, I guess. Yeah, electrolytes, um, cardio, and then the other one. It, before you even go near drugs, that would improve like vasodilation and improve um, nitric oxide content of your blood is nasal breathing. So pay attention to how you're breathing because you're biggest reservoir of endothelial nitric oxide synthase, ENOS, is in your oh, nose. Oh, wow, okay. So, I thought it was in your mouth. No, if you breathe through your mouth, you're actually limiting your ENOS. So okay. that's where okay. breathing, breathing through your nose, everyone wearing nose strips and everything, You as you breathe into your nose, the warm air that's coming into your nose activates the ENOS enzyme, or so they believe, and so then that leads to higher levels of nitric oxide being produced in your bloodstream. So <clears throat> nasal breathing, if you're doing cardio, nasal breathing up to a point where then you're at an exertion level that you have to mouth breathe, but nasal breathing combined with cardio is a surefire way to lower blood pressure from nitric oxide production. Hmm. So those, <clears throat> those simple things, I guess then you get into more fancy uh, ancillaries, whether we start taking well, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta tear them first. So we got yeah. cardio. I right? no, don't skip we ahead too much. S, we doing S to F. Again? Yeah, we're doing S to uh, S to uh, F. So I think we can all agree that electrolyte management, including the magnesium intake and calcium-rich foods and stuff, um, and cardio that's just certified S tier. Mm -hmm. You just no excuses. Off-season cruising, blasting your socks off. Um, just watching this podcast and not really following bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll be surprised. I watch this podcast. I love the anabolic ground table. And there's no anabolism in sight, but they love to farm So even those guys that are just here for research purposes, uh, cardio and electrolyte intake, stable. Please, 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 please. Because I can't go through all these emails. You know, I started my anadrol cycle and my blood pressure's through the roof. And I ask, what's the diet? And the cardio look like diet cardio it's, it's, i want to get big so, okay all right start all the right. basics yeah start the basics so s tier for both mm -hmm. 